To make sensitive components and substances, we need to prevent all the contamination sources we discussed in part two. But how best to achieve this? Let's start with a sealed airless room, a vacuum protected from everything outside. But we need a way for materials to enter and exit that room, as well as people who will require air. Also machinery, which will need servicing and any necessary tools. Suddenly, our room is open to all kinds of contamination. But a proper understanding of the design and operation of clean rooms will help us minimize these dangers. Clean air is produced by removing virtually all of the particles contained in normal room air. The air is passed through HEPA filters, that's high efficiency particulate air filters, which remove 99.97% of the particles greater than 0.3 microns in size. The air is then clean enough to enter our clean room. For clean rooms where even higher standards of cleanliness are required, there are OPA, that's ultra-low particulate air filters, which remove particles as small as 0.1 microns at 99.9999% efficiency. The air is maintained at a higher pressure than its surrounding environment, so that it always flows outwards. To construct our clean room, we need to consider using the right materials. The walls, floors and ceilings should be non-friable materials that do not easily crumble or break up. They must be smooth and easy to clean and disinfect. Plastics, stainless steel or glass are preferable. To minimize the risk of contamination during construction, clean rooms should be built following a clean build protocol that specifies work practices for those building and installing the facility. Every aspect of the design, construction and operation of clean rooms is guided by the ISO standard, clean rooms and associated controlled environments. This set of guidelines ensures global consistency for all industries that use clean rooms. The standard is referenced by two numbers, ISO 14644, which includes parts that cover the classification and operation of clean rooms, and ISO 14698, that is concerned with the control of biocontamination. The classification, or class, of a clean room specifies how clean it must be. This is measured by the number of particles of specific sizes that are permitted in each cubic meter of air at any moment. The ISO standard contains detailed specifications, including how and with what equipment air cleanliness can be measured. Other parts address clean room design, construction and operations, including personnel matters, such as clean room clothing and cleaning. There are many different applications that require clean air, and clean rooms can vary in scale greatly. Cleaner air can be supplied to targeted areas with the use of clean benches or laminar flow cabinets and completely enclosed isolators. There are also mini environments, which are a means of controlling environmental conditions for machines and sensitive processes. So, if we want a high classification clean room, how does it work? Air which has been fully conditioned for temperature and humidity enters through HEPA or OPA filters fitted in the ceiling. The clean air flows vertically downwards in unidirectional parallel streams at speeds of up to 0.45 meters per second. Particles are washed from surfaces and carried in the airstream. The flow of air leaves the room through a raised perforated floor or through wall-mounted ducts. There is a continual cycle of conditioned filtered air passing through our clean room. The choice of which class, size and configuration of clean room depend on the tasks to be undertaken and equipment to be used.